Now we consider a circular motion and the circular motion is such that let me consider a circle and in this circle say this is the center of the circle and let's say this is r of it now if i look here then this is two times r and this i call is the diameter of the circle and this is equal to two times r so the diameter is two times r let me write d equals 2r and is i calculated that s is equal to 2 pi r which i call the circumference so i can write that this is pi times 2r and 2r i write d so here pi is equal to the ratio of the circumference with the diameter and this is equal to 3.1416 and some other numbers say this is a rational number so it will go on but this can be approximated is 22 by 7. It is basically the ratio of the circumference with the diameter. Now the angular displacement we will have to measure this one and this can be measured in radians as well as degrees. Now we know that radians and degrees are two measurements. This a circle completes is completed by going two pi radians and in degrees I can write that this go by 360 degrees. So from here I can write that 2 pi radians is equal to 360 degrees and I can write further that 1 radian will be equal 360 divided by 2 pi now is i have written earlier that s is equal to r times theta so this implies that theta is equal to s over r now the circumference and the ratio of the circumference this arc length divided by r is theta so when the arc length when the arc length which is s divided by the radius divided by the radius when the arc length is exactly equal to the radius like this is the this is radius and this is the arc length when these two becomes equal then the angle will be actually equal to one radian so one radian we define that it is a particular angle such that when this is a particular angle for this angle when the arc length when the arc length becomes equal to the radius of that circle then that angle we will call one radian and how many radians are one radian is equal to how many degrees so I will write from here that 2 pi radians is actually equal to 360 degrees and from here if I divide this 360 by 2 pi then I will get 57.29 degrees. Now I define is I have defined that the linear displacement is x while the angular displacement is theta. Now these two are related with each other. The this I then turn into S and this I write is R times theta. I can write X equal R theta. Now when this displacement will change in time then we define that thing is velocity which we call the linear velocity. Now what is velocity? 
velocity is the rate of change the rate of change of linear velocity the rate of change of linear velocity so I will say that if the displacement is x then how much the displacement is changing means change in the displacement divided by the change in time and this I define is linear velocity and this will be measured in meter per second meter per second this I call the linear velocity now what about the angular velocity the angular velocity is a body is moving in a circle then it is covering angular displacement which is theta now the linear velocity the angular velocity will be the rate of change of the rate of change okay let me write this one not velocity but the rate of change of displacement which I call the linear displacement so the rate of change of linear displacement is velocity the rate of change of angular displacement will be called is the rate of change of angular displacement will be called is angular velocity and we will denote this angular velocity with omega so I can write is I establish the relation between the angular and the linear so here I will now establish the relation between V and that omega that what is the relation between linear velocity and angular velocity now I know that omega is equal to theta over t so I can write that this is the angular displacement which is theta and this is time now the angular displacement from this expression I can write that theta is equal to s over r so this is s over r and this is 1 over t so from there I can write that omega is equal if I write this s over t then s over t is actually the distance divided by the this is the linear distance divided by time and this is equal to v and this is r so 1 over r so I can write from here that v is equal to r omega now this v equals r omega is actually the relation between the linear velocity and the angular velocity we can now compare this one with that that s is equal to r times theta so now s equals r times theta and from here we can see that linear here linear here r times angular velocity r times this one so linear displacement is r times angular displacement linear velocity is r times angular velocity so this is the relation between the two we measure the angular velocity and the angular velocity is omega and omega is theta over t so theta is measured in radians and time is measured in seconds so i can write that omega is equal to radians per second now in order to consider an example of the linear and the angular velocity let's say for example a cycle is moving and this cycle is like for example going this way 
Now it is going with linear velocity v and this portion, this tile is actually going with angular velocity omega. So the tile goes with angular velocity omega and the cycle as a whole is going with linear velocity v. Now we discuss acceleration. Is we define acceleration is acceleration is the rate of change of velocity means how much the velocity is changing with respect to time. So we define acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. Now we know that acceleration, this is the linear acceleration. So what about the angular acceleration? Angular acceleration when a body accelerates in circular motion, then that is the angular acceleration. So the angular acceleration is should be defined is the rate of change of angular velocity. So I can write, let me define the angular acceleration by a symbol alpha and this will be then the change in angular velocity with respect to time. So let me derive now a relation between A and alpha that how these two are related. So we have that alpha is equal to omega over t and omega is equal to v is equal to r omega as we know that v is equal to r omega so from here omega is v over r and this is 1 over t now v over t is actually acceleration and 1 over R. So from here I can write that A will be equal to R times alpha. And this relation is now in accordance with our previously derived relations where we have written that V is equal to R omega and S is equal to to r theta. So we are having the linear velocity equal to r times the angular velocity. The linear displacement is equal to r times the angular displacement. Similarly, the linear acceleration is r times the angular acceleration. So this way we are having uh, or symmetries like this between the angular and the linear physical quantities. Now let me write A and let me write A in terms of the displacement as I know that this is dv over dt and now d over dt and V I can write is dx over dt. So I can write that this is d squared x over dt squared. Similarly, I can say that if acceleration will be equal to zero, when the body will not be accelerating, then I can write that dv over dt is equal to zero and if I integrate both sides, I will get that V is equal to constant. Similarly, now come back to here, to alpha. Then alpha can be written as d omega over dt. And this d over dt. And for omega, I will write that this is d theta over dt. So I can write d square theta over 
d t square. Now, when alpha will be equal to zero, then I can say the d omega over dt is equal to zero. And this will mean if I integrate both sides, omega is equal to constant. When angular acceleration will be zero, then angular velocity will be constant. As we have for when linear acceleration is zero, then it means we are having a constant linear velocity. We can understand the example of the angular acceleration and the the angular acceleration is with is the linear acceleration. Again, consider the example of a bike. Bicycle, let's see, and let's say we are having the angular acceleration will be in this direction. So, this will be the angular acceleration alpha, and the cycle as a whole will accelerate with linear acceleration a. So the time is accelerating with angular acceleration and the cycle as a whole is accelerating with linear acceleration. Now how the units will be? The units will be from here. I can see that I will have the unit of acceleration from here. This is meter. So it will be meter per second square. So I will have the acceleration is meter per second square and here is theta. So this is the theta is in radians. So we will have radians per second square. So this way we will measure the magnitude in these units.